My name is Audrey Carter. I'm the owner of AC Advertising. And I'm Diane Hutcherson. I'm the Executive Director for the Early Learning Coalition of Escambia County. We want to talk to you about our children here in Escambia County. There are about 18,000 preschoolers under the age of five in Escambia County. The county ranks as the second poorest county in Florida. By third grade, more than 30% of Escambia County's children still cannot read at their grade level. One in four Escambia County children do not complete school in four years. That's right, Audra. And as a matter of fact, we have some other statistics. 85% of who you are now as an adult, your, at your personality, your skills, who you are was determined by the time you were five years old. Wow, Diane, that's amazing. The early years really do make a big difference. The, your first five years of life determined who you will be and how successful you are in life. And what we found is that in the multicultural community, many people have not learned how important it is to speak to your child from birth to five years old. Can you tell us about that? Well, in fact, what we know is a parent is their child's first and most important teacher. It is those critical years before a child starts public school that make all the difference in their lifetime success. It's simple arithmetic. A child spends 900 hours a year in school and 7,800 hours outside of school. Which teacher has the most influence on your child? The teacher at home or the teacher at school? What are you doing with your 7,800 hours? Hello, hello. Do you like my hat? I do not. Goodbye, goodbye. One of the best times to read to your child is when they're not feeling their best. Parents have more impact on their child's life than any other person. Parents have only a few years to ensure that their child can develop the skills they need to be successful in life. I know that I am my child's first teacher. In fact, while a child is still growing in the womb, they are developing every day. While when a child is born, they're able to breathe on their own, communicate on their own, they're able to eat, all of those things occurred even before they were born. In fact, a newborn child, just a couple of hours old, can respond to the voice of his parents rather than a voice of a stranger. We have so many marvelous things that happen to children in those very early years. The first 36 months of life, those nine months before they're born, and the next 24 months in a child's life really make the difference in what happens to that child. How the child's brain develops is based on nature and nurture, the interactions a child have with the people around them and in the environment. The brain develops in many different ways. Most importantly, it is based on synapses, how they are formed, Diane. And I know you can tell us a little bit about that. What happens when a child is born is that everything that happens to a child, when they see an object, when they hear a sound, brain connections are, are made. And it's, it's almost like you have two parts of your brain coming together and when they interweave, that's a synapse, that's a knowledge moment that happens. So what you mean is that when a baby is born, there's a gap. And over the years, based on stimulation, from the time that they're in the womb to the time that they're two years old, the more stimulation a parent gives a child, the more ability of the child to be able to grow and learn. That's correct. And in fact, every experience a child has, both positive and negative, means a new synapse has formed. And so it's all of those things that happened that a child retains in his memory. So then are you saying that every child, no matter what, their culture, no matter who they are, from the time that they're born, have the opportunity to be all that they can be if they're stimulated in those first few years. That's what we're really saying, Audra. Uh, every child is born with about the same number of neurons. And then those neurons run and form synapses, those learning gaps that happen in a child's life. In fact, everything that a child does creates that learning environment. And at some point, our brains begin to weed out or let go of those things that are not repeated. When a child is born, they're capable of learning every language in the world. 
But those sounds that they don't hear repeated over and over again, that memory part goes away. So for the parents that are looking at this, is there a gap, is there a time period that if a child does not get that kind of stimulations to make those synapses connect, that that child would not be able to learn? The child would not be able to learn as rapidly or as well. It's those very early years, those birth to five years, when most of the learning takes place. There's something called windows of opportunity. And what happens in those windows of opportunity are if a child isn't given the right experiences, those windows begin to close. Let me give you a really short example, and it has to do with vision. If a child is born with a cataract on their eyes and that cataract is not removed by the time they're two years old, that child may have the cataract removed and their eye is correct, but they will never see normally because the brain synapses that handle vision are not yet developed and they can never go back and be redeveloped. So, in addition to synapses, one of the other most important things is the environment that the children grows up in. That's right. Having parents expose their children to all of the wonderful things in our environment before they're five years old. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the actual classroom stuff. It's the everyday things like colors and like things you hear are like hot and like cold. These things are the things that parents can do with the children without even thinking. It's the very most simple, basic things that make all the difference to, to a child. Hearing a sound, looking at colors, having a simple hugs and kisses, the touching that goes, that goes on, that's what makes the difference for children. And then finally, how important is hugging and holding and just being with your child in physical? It's the most important thing that can happen with human children. What we know is that human children that are not touched and loved die. It is the most critical thing that we can do for our children. So let's dispel something. One of the things that I, found, that I learned when I grew up is that sometimes parents don't want to hold their kids. So is that true? Should you hold I, your children? You should hold your child as much as possible. The human touch and interaction is what makes human babies thrive. Most time, failure to thrive in young children is because they're not touched and loved appropriately. And finally, one of the most important things about hugging and touching and teaching children when they're young is that they grow up into adults that are unable to hug and touch. You know, the most important thing you can do for a child is to talk, read, and hug them. Each and every day, begin reading to your child as soon as you start talking to them. School success leads to life success. Now, let's talk about uh, adults and children's lives. One of the things we know about our communities all across America is that the traditional family is not the family of the past. Actually, it's a family of a community, and that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child, is really true. But how important is it to have extended family? Or what does grandparents and children and pastors and teachers and relatives really do for a child in terms of growing in early learning literacy? Every adult that interacts with a child is important in what they do. Every child that has a loving adult that's caring for them. And when we use the word parent, we're really talking about who is the primary person in that child's life. It's not necessarily the biological parent. It could be a grandparent. It could be a friend. It's whoever is giving that child the love and respect that they need. They are making the critical difference in a child's life. And most of that learning is taking place before the child is entering formal school. So are you saying that when we have children who are not able to function in school, we can actually go back, if we look in that child's life, and see where there has not been interaction? In most cases, that is correct. What happens to those children in the very early years is what's made the difference. We make a difference in a child long before the time that the child enters formal schooling. 
You know, one of the uh, biggest problems in the African American community is behavioral issues. And we can never ever as parents understand the distinction between interacting with a child when they're young, holding, touching, reading to that child, showing them different colors and shapes. And now we can see how important that whole family unit is to that child when that child is in an environment where they are being shown things and being shown how to act and being interacted all the time. What can we do as a community, as pastors, teachers, and leaders, to help children who are either entering into third grade without this kind of formal education we're talking about here? Is there anything that we can do to help them? The most important thing that you can do is to read to a child. Because when you're reading to a child, you're doing more than just saying words. You are saying the words, and that's increasing a child's vocabulary. But you're spending one-on-one -on -one time with a child if you're reading. You're talking. They're hearing you read grammatically correct sentences. You're, um, you're touching, you're holding while you're holding the book. Whether you're sitting in bed with your child at night, you're sitting on the couch, or just in an easy chair. It's that interaction between the parent and child that makes the difference. Spending time reading with your grandchild is one of the most important things a grandparent can do. So, by age five, the child has already learned how to walk, jump, skip, talk, ask questions, eat, sing, and wash their hands, draw, write, and dress themselves, brush their teeth, learn shapes, know what they like and dislike, and most importantly, they know when they are loved. So in essence, what we're asking you to do is just be in your child's life in a way that makes it a two-way street, giving and taking and teaching. It all goes back to a parent is a child's first and most important teacher. Audra, it's those really informal things that we do with children every day that make all the difference. For example, let's pretend that you have a bowl of Cheerios and you've asked your child to pick up a Cheerio. So I'm going to pick up a Cheerio. Look at those fingers. What you've done is you've used a pincer grip. And isn't it amazing that those are the same two fingers pushed together that you use when you hold a pen or a pencil. So in fact, every time a child picks up that Cheerio off the table, they are building emergent writing skills because they're learned, they're developing the muscles that they're going to need to have writing skills in their later life. Did you know that by age three, the difference in the numbers of words heard is immense? The child of professional parents will have heard 30 million words by age three. The child of a working class parent will have heard 20 million words by age three. And the child of a welfare parent would have heard 10 million words by age three. That's a big difference, Audra. That's the difference in a child just hearing as many as one-third fewer words in their life. That means they don't have the ability to learn what those words mean, to put them in sentences, to know what those sounds are. It's a phenomenal difference. Just talking to your child every day makes a big difference. And you know, talking and hearing words on a TV actually uses a different part of the brain than when a person is talking to a child directly. So we need that one-on-one -on -one parent and child time. You know, that's very interesting. Um, one of the challenges of being here in Scammia County and having such high illiteracy skills is that we have a lot of families who are working poor. And that's a big problem here for us. You know, Audra, in Escambia County, 27% of our adults are either illiterate or functionally illiterate. That means almost one in four people in our community don't have the reading skills that they need to live normally, to do business, to fill out a job application, to read warning signs on labels. What we can do is start with our youngest children where we can make the most difference. And one of the things that we want you to do in our learning today in this, this DVD is to think about how you can help somebody's child 
we realize that we can't go back and change the things that have happened, but we certainly can start from the day. One of the most important things we can do when we're with children and with each other is to talk to each other, to interact with each other, and to be a part of that village concept. And learning and reading and teaching and sharing and hugging and holding is part of the great part of community that we need to start building. We show God's love to us by sharing that love with our children and grandchildren. We show love by spending time together, playing together, talking together, and working together. A world-class military requires world-class health and education. The most effective long-term investment we can make for a strong military is in the health and education of the American people. The path to success does not begin at age 17. The earliest months and years of life are a crucial time when we build the foundation of children's character, how they relate to others, and how they learn. There's really some very simple things that parents can do with their child every day. Talk to your child while you're feeding them, during bath times, during working times. Begin reading to your child as soon as you start talking to your child. Read the same book over and over. Repetition is really important for a young child. Ask questions when you're reading to the child. Point out the pictures. Count things on the page. Encourage your child in active reading. Ask the child to turn the page when it's time to turn the page. Everyone enjoys a good picture book. It doesn't always have to be words. You can story tell with a picture book any day. Read slowly with your child. And remember, libraries have lots of free books to share if you don't have books in your own home to share with your child. It's those simple, everyday things that make the difference. You know, sometimes reading is a little more difficult than it seems at first. For example, a lot of our letters in our English language system are made up of sticks and circles. But look how many ways those can be put together. If the stick goes first and then the circle comes, I might have the letter B or I might have the letter P. If the circle comes first and then the stick, I might have the letter D or I might have the letter Q. Sticks and circles can make a lot of difference and it's teaching children that visual discrimination so that they can begin to learn what our English letters are. Remember, it truly takes a village to raise a child, and it also takes a, a village to build literacy skills. So how can you help those of you who are listening to this video? And we're going to talk about that because there are countless opportunities to help just like reading a child every day. And you can do it at church when you are actually in your youth groups. You can have your older kids help your younger kids. The pastor can spend time reading to the children every day or every weekend. Or if you're a teacher, remember that you're your most important teacher, the very first teacher in the child's life are those that are in act interacting with the children every day. So Diane and I want to encourage all of you that while we do this DVD, we need you to help us deal with this literacy problem. We are truly a community of wonderful, wonderful people. And I believe that just like we've overcome other things, Diane, we're gonna overcome this. We certainly are. The children in Escambia County are our future. And we don't have, a, we don't have choices. We have to make a good future for our community and for our children. Remember, it's the very simple things. Parents, you are your child's first and most important teacher. Do the simple everyday things. Every child needs to have a, a story or book read to them every day. Talk to your child. Sing with your child. Explore the wonderful things outside. None of the things that we've talked about today require money. They require time. And a parent's time investment in their child is our investment in the future. 
Join the Early Learning Coalition and all those who have helped us to make this possible and be here with your children, with each other, and help a child learn to read. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Grandma, for teaching me the love of reading.